Hey everybody, Zero Tolerance 55 here, and today I'm bringing the first video in a new storyline series, this time focusing completely on the story of Bioshock, which is a video game franchise that has grown in popularity. It's one of my personal favorites, so I figured I'd tell a story to you that don't know it, or even those that you do know it, um, that are looking for a refresher course. So that being said, I'm going to jump right into this and kick it off. The story of Bioshock begins with a man named Andrew Ryan. Ryan was a Russian citizen who grew weary of how the government was running his country, feeling that the weak, or parasites as he put them, relied on the upper class to sustain them. He fled from Russia and headed to America, where he believed a great man could freely prosper. He devoted himself fully to his new country, grateful for the wealth and fame he was rewarded for his intellect and determination. However, when social programs spread across America in the 30s, Ryan felt the same feeling that he felt in Russia. He felt as if the socialist movements in America were once again catering to the parasites and that the upper class was supporting them. When the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Japan, Andrew Ryan had had enough. He set out with the fortune he had built for himself and started work on his new project, the underwater city of Rapture. Construction on Rapture began in 1946, with Ryan using his own private steam steamliner to transport supplies to the location where the city would be built in the North Atlantic Ocean. There was a building platform constructed, nicknamed the Sinker, which was used to lower supplies and crewmen to the ocean floor. Ryan hired the architectural firm Whales and Whales to design Rapture and turn it into a metropolis that was a perfect utopia where art, industry, and science would thrive undisturbed by outside forces and governments. Rapture was designed to be entirely self-supporting and was powered completely by underground heat vents. People from around the world immigrated to the underwater city as it was being built all of them being approved by Andrew Ryan, of course. These people were not allowed to tell people where they were going, and the string of disappearances around the world became known as the vanishing on the surface, in which thousands of people just merely disappeared. In reality, these people were in rapture, and they were there because Andrew Ryan believed they were the best examples of mankind. Unfortunately, the city wasn't designed to house the large amount of workers needed to construct it. While the citizens who Ryan had invited got to live in their new metropolis, all the workers were left in leaking, crowded, temporary housing areas in Rapture known as Popper's Drop. This huge difference between the workers and upper-class citizens was ignored by Ryan and his ruling council. One thing Ryan did acknowledge was that the citizens were becoming anxious due to the isolation of Rapture and the lack of the sun. He therefore invited psychologist Sophia Lamb in Rapture in order to help individuals cope with life at the bottom of the ocean, even though her utilitarian beliefs completely clashed with Ryan's free market ideal within Rapture. Sophia Lamb began devoting more and more of her time to poorer citizens as time went on. This and her aforementioned beliefs made her a significant political rival against Andrew Ryan, the very man who had brought her there. Around this same time, doctor and scientist Bridget Tenenbaum was walking around an area of Rapture known as Neptune's Bounty, when she saw a man playing catch. This wouldn't have been a big deal except for the man had previously had a paralyzed hand due to a war injury. After questioning the man, it was revealed that he had been bitten by a sea slug. The man had kept one of such slugs, and Tenenbaum asked if she could study it. She realized that she was onto something amazing and began the search to find someone to fund her research. Tenenbaum was blown off by all other scientists, and at some point she approached Frank Fontaine, a businessman with a well-known name in Neptune's Bounty. He agreed to fund Tenenbaum as long as he could make a profit off the findings in the end. What Tenenbaum didn't realize was that she was making a business deal with a man who made his fortune running a smuggling ring that brought contraband items from the surface into Rapture. Tenenbaum began her search, and she quickly discovered that the substance this species of sea slug created worked like stem cells. Using it, she was able to manipulate DNA entirely. She was able to rewrite the genetic code of the double helix associated with DNA to cure diseases, fix birth defects, and ultimately rewrite a human's genetic code, allowing them to do things never before possible. In a sense, she was able to give them superpowers or abilities. Tenen believed the substance was a rebirth for humanity, which she nicknamed Adam. Shortly after the discovery of Adam, another breakthrough was made. Scientists realized that if the slug was implanted in a host, it would generate as much as 20 to 30 times more atom than in its natural state. Originally, they tried implanting slugs into a variety of different hosts, but only one type of subject worked well, and these were little girls. After this discovery, scientists began implanting slugs into young girls, but they needed a steady stream of hosts to mass-produce atom, which is what Fontaine wanted. 
Fontaine decided to disguise his motives as charity work, setting up the Little Sisters Orphanage, advertising it as a place where financially pressed families could send their little girls for care in schooling. These families didn't know the truth about what was happening to these girls, and once implanted with the slugs, these girls became what is known as the Little Sisters. This was the first part of Rapture. The Rapture storylines was the founding of Rapture. Stay tuned, because part two is coming very soon, which is going to dwell more into the backstory. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys come back for part two. If you really did enjoy it, leave a comment, let me know, like, rate, subscribe, all that fun junk. Uh, if you have any questions, requests, or anything, hit me up on Twitter at ZeroTolerance55. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you later.